huge Mercedes star, vertical fins, all blacked out, strong AMG styling, definitely, but closed front grille and this round front means it is all electric because this is the Mercedes EQE 53 AMG. So the EQE is this electric E-Class or maybe electric CLS if you like and here now in the AMG version. There will be two AMG versions available, the 43 and the 53. We'll tell you all about these details here with Thomas and other crew. And indeed the front very strong and I think for the EQE styling that AMG look really does the car very well. Of course also stronger accentuations here in that lower part, you know, a little bit more aggressive. The lights, not only LED standard, but also this digital light comes standard for the AMG versions and these headlamps are also able to do projections on the road. For example, AMG logo or recently I also had an EQS. It was so funny when you are close to a construction site, you um, have a small digger <laughs> emoji basically projected on the road. It was very, very funny. The length here at 4 meters 95 or 195 inches. If we compare it to the EQS, this one here is 20 centimeters or 8 inches shorter or 9.5 centimeters or 3 inches shorter from the wheelbase. This will give you more driving agility indeed. So the lengthwise, the size is, you know, compared to an E-Class or CLS. But um, you can say CLS because you see here you have frameless windows and this rather comes closer to a CLS than to an E-Class, we could say actually. Very interesting that we also have the rear axle steering here for a normal EQE. You would either have 4.5 degrees or 10 degrees in the opposite direction in the front wheels. Here for the AMG version, it's limited to 3.6 degrees. That is of course something of a disadvantage because the turning circle won't be that narrow then. It is then, however, standard for the AMG models. What is the reason for that? The tires are actually wider, therefore it's not possible. And no matter if you pick 20 or 21 inch wheels, the, you know, the diameter changes then but the width of the tire is always then the same. You can see here 295 mil, so this is of course really large. These here are the bigger 21 inch wheels. If you want more comfort, then you would stick rather with the 20 inch wheels. What else is bigger? Yeah, not only the brake discs, of course, for better braking performance. If you really need that, most of the time the EVs use the recuperation. But also here, this rear spoiler, this one is way wider. Of course, that means less efficiency, but more downforce than here at the rear and more agility while driving a little bit faster, which you can do in the AMG versions. So the top speed for the 43, 210 kilometers an hour, or here for the 53 model, it's 240 kilometers an hour, or respectively in miles per hour, 130 miles per hour for the 43 or 150 miles Per hour for the 53 model here. In the lower part you can see you have these you know diffuser fins. They have a visual effect, they also have some aerodynamic effect but not to that extent actually. And here light strip goes all the way across the vehicle from right to left. Really beautiful I think. A very interesting design and yeah once again I think design wise especially here with these black accentuations it's really working very well with the EQE. By the way this is also here an option, you can see here. The high gloss back here, around the windows, and also at the, uh, at the side mirrors and so on. This is the night package. And standard would indeed be chrome around the windows. And also here in the lower area, the lower spoiler, would be chrome even with the AMG. So this very sinister black appearance, indeed, only optional with that night package. Here I have some electric motors and the normal EQE with the base model 350 starts with a rear only electric motor and there's a normal Mercedes all-wheel drive model and the AMG models always come with two electric motors, one in the rear, the bigger one, the smaller one in the front. That's why the maximum split is two-thirds of power in the rear, one-third in the front, but they're really very a lot. Acceleration figures here for the AMG model, the 43 is just over 4 seconds to 1 km or 60 miles an hour and the 53 model just over 3 seconds. Interesting for that is both come with race start, we also have tested that in the EQS AMG, that's a funny thing we're soon uh, going to show you that uh, again also with that sound experience. The 53 also gets the so-called boost function which even you know gives you more electric boost. 
Hardware-wise, interesting is when you go for normal EQE all-wheel drive and then upgrade to the 43, you have the same hardware as for the electric motors. The 53 here has modifications, even hardware modifications, than in the rear electric motor. Battery size is 91 kilowatt hours net. That means it gets the small battery from the EQS, but it will always be the same for all the different versions, also here for the AMG models. What can we expect from the range, actually? It's only an estimate because we have experience with the EQS, with the bigger battery, but here for the small battery, I at this moment calculate with around 500 kilometers or 300 miles in summertime. Note that neither the EQS nor the EQE have a heat pump. This will be missing in winter times, so the range will significantly drop in winter time. Just did the experience with the EQS and it will almost be cut in half actually. There is no frunk. The only thing you can open here towards the front is the fill-in for the wiper fluid. Normal EQE starts with steel suspension, a normal one, optional air suspension. The AMG models come standard with air suspension, but then five millimeters lower and also a stiffer setting that you don't have so much rolling. Then here are the door handles. When you um, open the vehicle, they come towards you. You have to press here. Here then you press to close. Door closing sound doesn't sound good at all because we have the frameless windows here so this is one cost of having that otherwise of course it could looks cool then we also have a nice material choice right here this is this new material which is kind of a mix of microfiber and neoprene feel then here we have microfiber they call it micro cut now not dynamica anymore then here we have window levers this is in capacitive and here, the control for the seats, you cannot remove them anymore. You've seen it now in a lot of new Mercedes vehicles. They don't give you a haptic feedback. And this here is also one button for the seat heating or the seat cooling. They combine the seat heating with the heated steering wheel, if it's, you know, specced in the vehicle, by the way, to, again, make less buttons. Here, the AMG interior is featuring a lot of AMG logos, for example, the um, illuminated one here at the door sill. Then AMG floor mats and yeah, the typical aluminum pedals. There we are. As an option, you can also get the steering wheel with microfiber at the sides and option optional microfiber here and carbon fiber in the top. Uh, sorry, in the bottom and in the, in the top part. This would be my choice to make the steering wheel animal free. And as for the seats, at least in Germany and some European markets, we get then a microfiber on the inside and article leather red on the outside. This is the animal skin seat, which probably also will again be standard in the US and the UK. We have to see about that for later configurations. Um, so not the best offering as for the animal free aspect here in this supposed to be sustainable electric vehicle. Here, seating position. The EQE in general, we feature two different seat forms. The base one will have a separate head restraint and will be a little bit more plush from the seating surface. This is here the sportier seat and it has a little stiffer bolstering, bolstering and it's not, not too wide here actually. So um, that's something we found recently that the Mercedes seats in the last recent years, different models, doesn't seem to be optimized for tall drivers and I do feel that here. So wouldn't say that it's, it's the best comfort here. As for the space we have here, um, 1 meters 86, 6 foot 1, some space left. This is here panoramic roof. We can also open it. That's actually quite cool. We have some electric vehicles which have these fixed panoramic roofs. Here we can also open it. And then for summertime, we can also apply a shade that doesn't get too hot. Let's just see if we were in the lowest position with the seat. Yeah, we were actually. So this is the seat uh, in lengthenment in the front here, by the way. Steering wheel has a very good size. And yeah, this already gets a very sporty atmosphere with that steering wheel. AMG steering wheel also have this two-spoke design. Then hashtag capacitive BS buttons on the steering wheel, for example, for the cruise control. But at least you get some kind of haptic feedback. Left side, you do control the instruments, which also have AMG-specific graphics. You can see it right here. For example, and this is an all stressed here on the um, power output figures. There will be different recuperation modes. You can pick them with the pedals, left and right. This is a very good build quality and listen to that. Also good acoustic feedback. Normal recuperation, 
less recuperation or stronger recuperation or you press and hold and then you have an adaptive one. So when a car is in front of you, speed is being reduced. When there's nothing in front of you, the car is actually rolling. And this car can recuperate up to 260 kilowatt. That's massive. That's faster than it actually works with charging. Charging is maximum 170 kilowatt, but the main important thing is it keeps the charging curve over a period of time so that from 10 to 80 percent state of charge you can do that in about 30 minutes and it's not a big difference to the EQS which has a little bit higher peak charging and AC charging 11 or 22 kilowatt AC optional so you know as for the um, charging infrastructure they have inside the vehicle inside that concept and the efficiency at warm temperatures very well done Ooh, look at that Wow, it's always amazing with ambient lighting. Here also with red contour stitches in the top part, once again with this new material here as well. Really cool, and it has a special startup feature as well. Listen to that. Woo, yeah. And there's an, also this outside projection. The passenger screen it has this AMG screensaver, by the way. And you can also see how the ambient lighting goes to the inside of the door. Very beautiful. An optional Burmese a sound system with one of the best 3D sounds that is available, actually. And also when you... Oh. <laughs> That's when you uh, say goodbye to the vehicle, actually. One more time here when starting up. And you, you really feel like this this base and you know in, in, in your knees and so on. this is very very interesting feature definitely you also have special performance apps here for example you can see some um, performance figures this is the hyper screen by the way with an almost 18 inch screen it's an option it would start with a more vertical 12 inch like screen like we know from the s class or from the c class for example and then you do not have the passenger screen so this is also for the amg model is an option here, for example, you can also have a G, uh, G vectoring meter and so on. So, yeah, they, they added actually some um, some small tweaks to that. So you also have some more AMG feature here, or even a well, if you want to go to the track, for example, or want to do some drag races, then you can also um, measure these times. Um, <laughs> It's being on a closed, yes, of course, we are on a closed off track, yes, of course. So uh, for, for <clears throat> drag race times and so on, not sure, it's not loading at this moment. Or telemetry from the yeah, possible race track and so on. And you can also adjust the settings you want to have in the steering wheel here, for example. So here you can, you know, control the sound experience, for example, as a special authentic or performance is even stronger than... Uh, especially during the launch control, this have, it has a very massive effect here, lights, ambient lighting and so on. So here we can also change the sound, for example. Ooh, powerful. <laughs> and um, here in the so-called settings select, then I can actually choose what I want to have displayed in that uh, small steering wheel uh, column in, in the corner there. And you can even remove some of the gauges there or have now even more possibilities to put like so many things you want to access them there with the hotkeys well wow. on the other side you can always you know go to this driving mode then or then turn it right here and then you can also go to the sports plus mode you also hear that even when being stationary here once again good grip from the steering wheel but what about the instruments what you can see, but what we cannot see, are these infrared sensors, which are flickering, all, but just on camera. <laughs> but here, the digital instruments, you can see here, you have different total stylings. Ooh, track pace. And then, for example, also more classic, if you drive the AMG, but on the inside, you maybe just want an understatement. By the way, here in this snow mode, you only have 50% of the total power. In the comfort mode, you have 80 or 85 percent, depending on 43 or 53 model. And then in the sport and sport plus mode, then you get towards this 100 percent of total power output. Unless you put pedal to the metal, because with the kick down, you always get the full power. Hey, no piano lacquer here in the middle console. Nice carbon fiber cover, and then you can slide it open. Inductive charging mat. This is the car key here, by the way, if you haven't seen it yet. USB C connectors. 
These cup holders are adaptive. However, if you have a, a higher glass bottle here, they do not apply enough pressure and then the glass bottle is like going like wow, wow, wow. So not too happy with these cup holders indeed. Then here, start stop button. And you can also press this AMG button then. And you can also get to the um, AMG settings zone, but usually you do it at the steering wheel. And here you have this typical split opening for the armrest. Tinted windows in the rear. Hi, I'm Troy McClure. You know me from movies like, yeah, okay, I'm still Thomas. Here, you can see this is the part that stays that way. And then it goes down. Looks a little bit weird, right? But won't, won't matter, you know, when the door is closed. Uh, here, in the rear. Take a look at first. Looks quite spacious as well, leg room, but what about the headroom? You know, the EQE is a little bit shorter than the EQS. As for wind efficiency, by the way, it's actually better when a car is longer. Then, here on the inside, you fall a little bit backwards. So, yeah, we had similar in the EQS, but here, of course, a little bit less space. Leg room, however, is very sufficient. You can see here for four tall adults, or even five, no problem. Headroom. I put my spine up now. Um, address has been saved. Which address <laughs> you want voice activation. Said, I said headroom and it's like, like home address. Headroom, home address. Interesting. Could you so, repeat your input? No, I won't repeat the input. Cancel. <laughs> so here, I when I come close here, yeah, it's really close for the headroom. Really, really close. That's the thing. And this is also one of the reasons why they did not go for a fast package. If they had done that, they would be kind of, yeah, no headroom left. In the middle part, you can sit, and then you're more towards the panoramic roof, but the back part is really hard. So, comfort in the rear, mediocre, but legroom, actually quite sufficient. Now the trunk, or the boot, with a very soft and nice and, you know, fluent opening process. Then here, the length, you can see here, is about a meter or 40 inches, but what's that? Hmm, to see the hard plastic cover here in the Mercedes in the trunk, that's a little bit disappointing. I would have wished to have, you know, a fabric cover there. Maybe that's something when a Mercedes engineer see this video and also the comments say like, ah, maybe that's a thing, a detail we can improve then. Here the width is also very limited, so that's, ooh, that's rather towards like, you know, some 85, 85 centimeters or 33 inches, so very limited. And the height here is about 50 centimeters or 20 inches. Here, a little bit more space underneath. You could put a charging, charging cable in there. The total length here, by the way, you see this will work very well. So this is an almost, yeah, yeah, it's like one, 190 or 73 inches. So that's actually quite good. And just to show you, um, we put a cabin trolley inside. You have a bit of understanding this way, so vertically it still does fit. So the EQS has the advantage that it has this fastback trunk that op opens you know more widely. However, here of course, yeah, it will be way cheaper. The EQE this will be a big <laughs> advantage, of course. And the safety test right here. Well, that's quickly, but still stops. So that's uh, you know good torque applied. And then when we close it, let's listen to the sound. Ooh. That's maybe a little bit too rough, right? Maybe some AMG sound design also for that. So are you ready to go for the electrified AMG models yet? No matter if you're an AMG customer or not, would be looking forward to your comment about this choice. We already have a video of the EQE in the normal non-AMG format and also the first ride in the EQE, also with the rear-wheel drive 350 EQE. This is very interesting, tune in there.